Hi, Year 12. Um, I just wanted to quickly take you through your literary conflict um, analysis worksheet. Now, remember I said that this is really, really, really useful um, for the exam. I would go as far as to say that this is really good exam practice for you because, um, like I've said in class before, whatever examples that you select now could potentially be examples that you use in your exam um, of each literary conflict or of the literary conflicts that you're asked to speak about or if it's just one literary conflict. So my advice to you is, um, as I talk you through my example, which most of you should have already had a look at because you've started this worksheet, um, where I tell you to reference and where you need to reference, go ahead and grab your novel and actually um, mark that page in your novel as perhaps something to come back to for man versus society, for example. So um, what this worksheet is asking you to do is essentially to find examples of each literary conflict in the novel and practice your paragraph writing. I'm going to talk about paragraph structure in a second, okay, just to remind you of the structure that we use. Um, so first things first, um, let's take a look at this first um, literary conflict, man versus self. So I've asked you to write a definition for this literary conflict type. Please write a definition in your own words, okay, to remind yourself that you understand exactly what this conflict is about, okay? It's very easy to confuse a couple of them. So um, in this first box, I want you to give me an event from the novel, so something that takes place in the novel um, that you think is an example of the conflict man versus self. So I have given you an example here that's pretty um, prominent in the novel, and I say... When Amir invites Hassan to visit the pomegranate tree after witnessing the assault and harm done to Hassan. So that's my example. Um, due to Amir, Amir's internal guilt, he hurls several pomegranates at Hassan in shame. So that's the example. I've just written a couple of sentences to describe that. Okay. This will become later on um, something that you put into your paragraph. So the next thing you need to do is find a direct quote. My direct quote that is evidence of what I just said um, says, I wished he would, I wished he would give me the punishment I craved. So maybe I'd finally sleep at night. Maybe then things could return to how they used to be between us. But Hassan did nothing as I pelted him again and again. You're a coward, I said. Nothing but a goddamn coward. As you can see here, I've referenced to a uh, 2003, page 78. You must reference in the exam every time you use a direct quote. If you do not reference and if you do not use this style of referencing, which is APA, you will be marked down. So before I get to explaining the peel paragraph, um, let's go back and have a quick look at um, how we should be structuring paragraphs at Year 12 Standard. So I just want to remind you for today's lesson at home, um, basically what you're working towards. Okay, I'm just going to move myself. Uh, so we are aiming this week and when we come back in week 10 to recall and identify. So you need to be able to remember what are the three stages of literary conflict and identify them, okay? But also to examine how each of those have been portrayed in the novel. That's essentially what your exam is asking you to showcase. So you should be able to identify and understand three, the three literary conflicts that will be proven in your definition and your understanding depends on the examples that you choose and how appropriate they are. You need to be able to um, illustrate those moments and then construct them into a peel paragraph that analyzes and evaluates the literary conflict. And this is essentially what we'll be working on for the next couple of weeks. So Peel Paragraph, I wanna remind you of what it looks like, okay, at year 12 level. Um, and I wanna remind you of why it's so important as well, okay? So structure is important. Structure is um, criterion A and criterion B as well of your um, essay. Okay, so I'll take you through the criteria sheet when we come back in week 10. So Peel, you've all heard of Peel before. You may have done Peel a bit differently, but this is my version of Peel. This is what you need to use. P is for point sentence, okay? E is for elaboration. The second E is for evidence. There's a third E, which is your explanation of the evidence. And finally, you have an L for linking sentence. So your point sentence is telling me what's the main point of your paragraph. What are you trying to say? What is the main argument that you have? And that should be written in a clear sentence, okay? So when I read your point sentence on its own, the topic sentence of each paragraph, the first line of each paragraph, it should clearly explain to me what your paragraph is going to be about, okay? 
elaboration. You need to elaborate a little bit further. And the worksheet that I'm giving you already makes you do that. That's why I've given you the worksheet the way that I have. So you need to explain and expand on your point sentence. Give us a little bit more context, a little bit more detail. Perhaps you describe the event that took place before you give me the evidence, okay? So including more knowledge about the topic or elaborating on your key ideas. You have to do that before you get to just throwing in a quote, which is the next E, evidence. We don't just make a point, throw in evidence and say, therefore, that proves my point. It's not enough at year 12 level. So at year 12 level, your sentences, sorry, your paragraph should be between, I'm going to say eight to 10 sentences, at minimum six to eight sentences, okay, or seven to nine sentences. So evidence is where we throw in a quote, okay? One quote per paragraph isn't enough for you guys. Two quotes per paragraph is ideal to prove your point, and I'll explain how you do that in a second. So we've elaborated. We then need to put in a quote that is evidence to prove what our point is, okay? Um, it should be, if you are directly quoting something, it must be in quotation marks, those two commas, uh, sorry, those two apostrophes, and it must be in brackets afterwards as well, correctly referenced as I showed you in the worksheet, okay? You must use quotes in this exam. You cannot just retell the story without um, directly quoting. You've got to include a direct quote. What happens after that, guys, is we don't just say, therefore, this proves my point. We need to unpack that evidence. We need to break it down, analyze it, and, and explain to me as your examiner what is that evidence telling us in relation to your point? What does it show about the character? Okay, so you've given me an idea, you've elaborated on it, you've now given me some evidence to prove the point, but now you need to explain to me the link between your point and that evidence. How is that evidence showcasing exactly what you're trying to say? Why is it a good example of what you're trying to say? Man versus self is, okay? So you need to spend time explaining the evidence. What you would then do if you're using two quotes per paragraph or even if you're using three is we just repeat this section here. So let's say you've got quote number one, you explain that quote, but then you have another example you want to talk about that also relates to man versus self. You go back, you put the quote in, and then you explain that quote again, and then we link. And our linking sentence is about linking back to our original point. Therefore, or thus, or hence, this proves or this therefore showcases or through this example, whatever it is, you need to be able to say how it proves your point, okay? So peel is about using this structure. If you have two quotes, I'm just going to recap. We put in one quote, we explain the evidence, then we put in the next quote and we explain the evidence again. And if you have three quotes, you would do that a third time, okay? Two quotes per paragraph is ideal. You may want to go for three, but you don't need to necessarily go for three, okay? Um, so if we go back to your worksheet, I want to show you my example, which you would have had a read through already. If you haven't, you really should have got to that. So let's have a look at that structure that I just showed you in my paragraph. So I say a clear example of the literary conflict man versus self can be seen in the novel when Amir invites Hassan to visit the pomegranate tree after witnessing the assault and harm done to Hassan. All you can see, guys, is that I've literally taken this as my point sentence here, or part of it as my point sentence, okay? Um, and I've also taken the next part as well, this next part of my sentence here, in this first column, to add on to my elaboration, which is the second E, or the sorry, the first E in your peel paragraph. So firstly, as a point sentence, in the first sentence of your paragraph, I need to know which literary conflict you're going to be speaking about. So my literary conflict is clearly outlined and articulated to the reader. I clearly say a clear example of the literary conflict, man versus self. So I shouldn't be wondering halfway through your paragraph, wait, which theme is he or she talking about? Or which th conflict are you talking about? Okay. These sentences here, guys, so... I've kind of merged the first sentence with the second sentence, but you don't have to do this. So I say, due to Amir's guilt, he hurls several pomegranates at Hassan. So these sentences together, including with the, with the topics, the point sentence here, um, they're also elaborating and giving a quick recount of this specific event that I'm referring to. I would say you could make your elaboration longer, maybe one to two sentences or two to three sentences. It's up to you. Um, probably not three, actually. Probably just two. 
okay, for your elaboration. So point, we have our elaboration here, and mine kind of merges with my evidence, but you don't have to do that, okay? Um, notice how I have punctuated this sentence. I've put quotation marks. I wish he would. I wish he'd give me the punishment I craved. Um, and at the end here, I do put my reference. Hosini, 2003, page 78. You must do that, okay? So it's author, surname, um, the year, and then the page number, all right? Now, something that you might notice is that I have used two pairs of quotation marks. That's because Amir um, is including his own dialogue. So if I actually open the novel, it ends in a quotation mark, okay? So that's Amir's quotation mark. This is my quotation mark at the end here because I'm quoting what he said in the novel. You don't have to do that every time. It's just if in the novel your um, character ends with quotation marks because they were saying something, that means they've finished speaking, but you need to finish quoting after that, okay? So if you read what I've written here, I say, Amir includes his own dialogue, which is said out loud to Hassan. This is included in the quote from the novel, okay? The quotation marks on the outside signify that I'm starting or ending my quote, okay? If you have any questions about that, just let me know. Now, what's really important in your analysis, guys, is this section here, the explanation of evidence. This is really... Um, the crux of your essay. If you don't explain your evidence, you can't score well, okay? So I say, here, Hosseini's work paints a darker side to Amir's character and allows the reader to observe the guilt, discomfort, and utter remorse that he experiences within himself. Despite the fact that he has labelled Hassan as a coward, ironically, it is Amir who is, in fact, the coward and the one who will not confront the reality of the situation that haunts him within. Ultimately, it is the sheer fact that Amir did not possess enough bravery to stand up to his only true friend, friend Hassan, simply because he was afraid. So this is about two to three sentences here of me explaining the significance and the relevance and the meaning of the quote, okay? And then I say in my linking sentence, this example clearly relates to the theme of man versus self as it explicitly demonstrates the internal moral conflict that the main character, Amir, experienced. And it is this act in the novel that creates an ongoing battle of conscience for Amir. So you can see that I'm not saying, therefore, this proves my point. I'm actually explaining together what can we evaluate from what we've seen through this quote here, okay? It justifies and it summarizes and it links to my point sentence really well, all right? So that's the level of what I'm expecting um, in each of your paragraphs that you write for each of these boxes. It's gonna take time, so you have the extra week next week to work on this, but no less than what I've written, guys. No less than what I've written. Um, and you do need to do this for each. So three examples for each literary conflict. The reason I'm asking you to do this is because you can take some of the notes that you've written here or some of the ideas that you've created and put them into your notes to take into the exam as well. You should get to the exam and feel confident that you have enough examples for any theme or any literary conflict that you get asked to write about. Guys, last thing, and then I'm going to um, sign off and let you continue working. I have also included another student example. So this is from one of my past students um, that you can have a look at as well. A, a student example of one of the rows that they've completed as well as appeal paragraphs. So have a look at their example, compare it with your own work as well. If you have questions, please let me know. Have a great break, guys. Halas, and I'll see you in week 10.